Hello everybody, it is JT Productions and welcome back to another 2023 Preview Prediction video. Today, I'll be doing the Colorado Buffaloes. So, let's get right into it. Well, Colorado was the worst Power 5 team in college football last year, going 1-11 with their only win being against California. They had the same record as Northwestern who went 1-11 with their only win coming against Nebraska. Now, with that, of course... Their head coach was fired. And their losses included losses against TCU, at Air Force, at Minnesota, UCLA, at Arizona, at Oregon State, Arizona State, Oregon, USC, Washington, and Utah. So, all in all, no truly terrible losses. Like, there's no, like, Cal Poly loss in here, but still... You need to win more than one game a year. So, what's changed between now and then? Well, they fired their head coach and hired Deion Sanders. You, I'm sure that you've um, you've heard the name Deion Sanders, defensive back in the '90s, one of the best defensive backs of all time. He was the head coach of Jackson State uh, the past two years, and he decided he wanted to go into a more uh, big boy college football look role and that's exactly what he did so going over to the roster we're looking a lot different from last season from what I see only four returning well only a handful of returning starters projected starters there's only four with uh, Gerald Christian Leshen at left tackle Van Wells at center and Lewis uh, Passarello at tight end on defense, there's only one, Trevor Woods, at strong safety. Now, at uh, everywhere else, quarterback, Shader Sanders coming in from Jackson State. You have two freshmen behind him. Running back, you have Alton McCall uh, McCalskin coming in from Houston, as well as Cavassier Smoke coming in from Kentucky. You have Travis Hunter coming in from... Um, Excuse me. Uh, uh, sorry, I just blanked. Jackson State. Xavier Weaver coming in from South Florida. Uh, these are wide receivers, by the way. Uh, Jimmy Horn coming in from South Florida as well. I've heard his name a couple of times. You also have some backups in Javon and uh, Antonio coming in from Northwestern State. And uh, Willie Gale... Willie Gaines coming in from Jackson State. Uh, tight end, you have that Luis Passero. You have Elijah uh, Yelvertron coming in from Iowa. On the offensive line, you have uh, left guard Tyler Brown coming in from Jackson State. And Jake Bailey, or Jack Bailey. Coming in from Kent State. And finally, at right tackle, you have Sevion Washington coming in from Kent State as well. So the offense has been completely revamped, and the defense is even more revamped. Uh, on the defensive line, you have Jordan Dominic coming in from, I believe, yeah, Arkansas. You have. Uh, Leonard Payne coming in from Fresno State at nose ta or defensive tackle. You have or at nose tackle. You have Shane Coax coming in from Dartmouth. That's an interesting one. You have at linebacker Des Moines Kennedy coming in from Fidlode, Alabama. Uh, you have Levante Bentley coming in from <sighs> Levante Bentley coming in from Clemson. Travis Hunter is also uh Listed as playing both offense and defense with 
the Colorado Buffaloes. So that will be interesting to look at. You also have Shiloh Sanders coming in from um, Jackson State. Shiloh and Shadur, as you could probably tell, are Dion's sons. So that will be interesting to watch. Uh, Kamari McLean is a freshman defensive back, uh, five-star player coming in looking to uh, start at the other corner spot, and Miles Slusher looking at, from Arkansas looking to be a nickelback. So that's the starting roster for Colorado. A lot of transfer talent. Are they going to be able to congeal well? How are they going to do in his first season? Well, let's look at the schedule and figure that out. Now, Colorado does not have a, uh easy schedule by no chance. Their easiest game is probably against either Colorado State, uh, yeah, that's probably, or Stanford. So let's get right into it. Starting the year uh, on Saturday, September 2nd, you play at TCU, uh, the team that made the national championship game. Now, they don't have Max Duggan anymore, but they have Chandler Morris, who was the original starter of this past season and started the game against Colorado. So how do I think that Colorado's going to do in this game? I, I just don't think this early is going to be uh, – they maybe could put up a fight early, but I just don't know if they're going to be able to keep up with TCU, with um, Sonny Dykes and that offense, with this – uh, team being a lot of new players to the Colorado program. So I think you lose this game before coming hunt back home to play Nebraska. Nebraska, another team with a new head coach and Matt Rule. Uh, I do think that they have more consistent and uh, a lot of talent, a lot of veteran talent on that team. I think you lose that game too. Uh, then you play Colorado State. I would not be surprised if Colorado State came into this game and gave you a fight. Uh, they're always looking to – I'm sure that they're going to be looking to upset you at home. However, I do have you getting Deion Sanders' first win of the his Colorado era. So you're one and two before going on the road to Oregon. Now this one, I think you lose to Oregon and I think you lose to USC. Both teams are supremely more talented than you. And you playing at Eugene and then USC at home – I just don't I don't think you're gonna be able to beat them. So you're one and four before playing at Arizona State. Arizona State, more of your talent level, and I believe I have you winning this game. Uh you see, Arizona State, they're bringing in a new head coach as well, Kenny Dillingham. And I think with the amount of talent that you brought in at this point, after five weeks, you should have a good understanding of who's going to be the starters and who's going to be not. And I think that's going to help a lot against this Arizona State team. I think you get your first Pac-12 win in the uh, Deion Sanders era and go and are 2-4 and four at this point. Then you play Stanford. Stanford, I believe, is going to be probably the worst team of the Pac-12 this year. And I think that in a close win, you get the win here at home. Going into the bye week, 3-4. and four. Two more wins than... Than last year, last year's whole year, and you got the bye week at a good time because after it you have to go on the road to UCLA. Now UCLA was a pretty good team last year. They had DTR who's tearing it up in the preseason, and they had a bunch of other guys. And Chip Kelly brought in Dante Moore, a five four five star guy. However, ah, UCLA is just a weird team to figure out. Uh, some years under Chip Kelly, they've been absolutely just mediocre or terrible, and last year they were amazing. I think Colorado sneaks up on UCLA here. I think after the bye week, they go to the Rose Bowl, and Shadur Sanders, Travis Hunter, and Shiloh Sanders, and all those guys that they got in the portal, I think that they shine in this game and upset the Bruins in Pasadena. So you get back to 500, you're 4-4 four and four before playing Oregon State at home for homecoming. Now, you could be uh, arguing, what do you mean you, UCLA loses to Colorado? Well, if you don't think that UCLA is going to lose there, give UCLA the win and give uh, Colorado the loss against uh, 
give Colorado the loss against UCLA and give Colorado the win against Oregon State because I think the physical nature of UC, or Oregon State is going to uh, give Colorado a loss here. So I think you go to four and five before playing Arizona at home. Now Arizona, Jed Fish has Jane Delora and all those guys going well. Uh, did last year. And I think this is going to be an interesting and close game, but I do think Colorado gets the win in the end against Arizona. I just don't think at this point in the year Arizona's going to have the depth to consistently be as good as they want to be. So I think Colorado gets the win here. Uh, you're 5-5 five and five before going uh, back-to-back on the road against Washington State and then at Utah. The Washington State game's interesting. I could totally see you winning this game or Washington State winning this game. But with how crazy the Pac-12 is, I'm going to give Washington State the win just because of the coaching staff being there the whole time. And um, I just just have a feeling about the game. So I think you lose there, and I do think you lose to Utah at the end of the year to finish the season 5-7. and seven. Not bad for Dion's first year, going 5-7 and seven, uh, in the first year with Colorado, getting a uh, four-game uh, addition to the previous year. So, anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and go dogs.